Welcome, travelers, to my realm of nightmares. Allow me to be your personal assistant. Come in, take a seat, get comfortable. For when you step into my realm, there's no stepping out. As has been stated in a number of other stories on the net about the dark web, if you don't have a reason to be on the dark web, then stay off it. Obviously, I recommend understanding the technology, get to know what a VPN is, understand how Tor and encryption all works, but only for the sake of knowledge and an understanding of security. I am all about understanding technology and really getting to know the layers of the internet, but don't go looking for illegal or questionable content because if you look, he will find it. That said, Moving on to the story that I wanted to share. This happened several years ago. I would say early to mid-2000s at least. This was a time before the internet was this huge entity that everyone spent all their time on. When broadband was like 10 Mbps at most. And Newgrounds was king of the internet. Back then, I was actually a contractor for web development. People and organizations that wanted to have their presence on the net would contact me and I would discuss what they wanted, then build out a website for them. These weren't complex websites like what exists now. They are more like pages with static content and pictures, basically just, this is our company and what we do, pages. It was a good paying gig back in the early 2000s. A lot of companies wanted their presence on the web and I worked with a lot of local corporations. It's not super relevant, but it helps to, one, let you know how old I am, and two, let you know that I understand technology and how the web works. Back then, I was always on the web, looking into competitor sites and seeing what worked where, and pulling inspiration from things that already existed. At one point, I was talking to a buddy of mine, another tech person, and he brought up that I should consider looking at the dark web for some inspiration. At first, I was a bit confused. The only things I knew about the dark web was that it wasn't easy to get onto and that it was where hackers and criminals hung out on the web. I asked him why he thought I should be going to the dark web and he made a point that I couldn't refuse. He mentioned that I'd probably be the only person in the area that built websites that had seen parts of the dark web slash deep web. Basically, he was saying that I would have a leg up on everyone because I would have an idea that they wouldn't have. I kind of agreed with him. So, after chatting with him, he convinced me and I had him come over to set up my system for accessing the dark web. I got on and started just going through random sites and trying to avoid anything that could be illegal. And I found a neat site that worked like a wiki. I don't think it was actually the deep web wiki or anything like that, but it was a collection of links very similar to it, and some of them worked. For the most part, they ended up just on the dead ends with nothing on the other side, but some of them were interesting forums and just pages with information about random things. I was just happily clicking along when I came across a page that kind of looked like the original version of YouTube. If anyone has been around for a while, then you know what I mean. Old blocky page with the star rating on the videos. What was weird to me was that a lot of the front page videos were just a black screen. And when I clicked on them, they had an overlay that said something along the lines of video has expired. What was strange to me was that the titles of the video were just single words. The first one I clicked on was titled hang. There was another one that was called electric, and one called pain. Obviously, these were a bit ominous, but there wasn't much on the screen for the video, 
just a title and a star rating. Hang had a five star rating and it showed that it was rated 40 times, for instance. I was scrolling through the front page and I finally found a video that didn't have a black box overlay. It was titled, Shoot. The thumbnail for the video, literally sitting in a nearly empty room that was trashed. I clicked the video and it started up pretty quick. I don't know why, but part of me was sitting there and thinking this was just going to be a fairly normal video. That it was going to be some sort of vlog or something from a guy in the thumbnail. Instead, what I got was a video of a guy sitting in this dingy looking room with a syringe in his hand. As much as I wanted to click away, I just sat there and watched his video as it played out. As the video started, he was just sitting there and staring at the camera. And it looked like he nodded to someone behind the camera. After a second or two, the audio cut in and I heard him saying something like, for 300, right? And then a voice said, yes. He nodded and glanced back to the camera and basically started saying his name and location. I don't remember where he was, but he said his name was Jeff and that he was doing this for the site for an amount of money equal to 300 and that this video would serve as his contract. Then he ended with, and remember kids, don't do drugs. Then after a second, he situated himself in the chair and tied off part of his arm. Then he took the syringe and shoved it into his arm. Long story short, he shot whatever was in that syringe, I want to assume it was heroin, into his arm. And he was doing this for money. My guess is that this site was up for people to do things for the audience. And they would get paid for it. This was like some sort of dark web YouTube or Twitch for people to pay and watch what happened to people in certain situations. Watching this guy have a reaction to the drug that he put into his arm was horrifying. He seriously collapsed on the floor started convulsing, and I really don't want to remember the rest of it. I clicked off of it and went back to the main page, and at that point, other videos became clear. Hang, electric, pain, all these were videos of people doing something to themselves for payment. The fact that Hang had a high rating didn't bode well with me at this point. I could only imagine what happened on that video they got people to rate it 5 stars. After watching this guy drop to the floor from injecting again, I am assuming heroin, I wasn't very curious on the website anymore. I closed the page and decided that I was done with all that. And honestly, the sight of that guy and the thought of what the other videos most likely contained has seriously haunted me ever since. The dark web is a place where you can buy damn near anything for the right amount of Bitcoin. From things like the obvious, drugs, hacking tools, personal information on people you want to stock, all the way to things that are much more obscure. Things like erotic pets, hitman services, though most of these are honeypots and illegally obtained weapons. Most of the time, when you think about buying things on the dark web, it's best to not think too much on what you're looking at. Take it at face value and don't ask questions. You don't want to know where the hell those guys got that block of drugs or the handgun that you just purchased. Because odds are when you get to the end of that rabbit hole, you're going to find that someone is either dead, injured, missing, or being looked for by federal agents. My point is you really don't need to be on the dark web unless you plan to break the law in some way, shape, or form. That said, there is one service that I found on the dark web that actually made me think about it and what could have or could be happening. For a bit of backstory, I spend a lot of my personal time on the internet. I do a lot of contractor IT work for large companies, mostly data security and security analysts for medium-sized corporations. One of my secondary jobs in my cybersecurity work is what's known as threat hunting. A threat hunter is someone that goes out onto the deep and dark web and tries to find pages that are selling valuable information for websites or technologies. 
Basically, they go to see if companies' information is available to hackers, or if they're using technologies that are being actively exploited. This doesn't have anything to do with my story, but it gives you an idea of who and what I do for a living. And it helps explain why I was out on the dark web. Now, because I had to find this data on the dark web, typically information that was for sale, I had to get in with the people selling the info and had to purchase it when necessary. These were legitimate sales on the dark web. Yes, this is a gray area, and yes, this can be an issue when doing this. But a lot of the time, it was critical for what I was doing for these organizations. Because of this, I spent a lot of time on sites that were built to sell illegal content. This ties back to how I started the story. The sites that sell illegal content, items, and services, typically, you see these things and you just understand that they exist and move on. However, there was one site that had something that made me legitimately terrified. Mostly because of the two services that were sickeningly tied together. The first service that I saw was one that was unfortunately fairly common, which is escorts. A lot of the time, these escorts on the dark web are not willing participants. They are more often than not victims of human trafficking. This alone is sickening and terrible, but the next part made it worse. The website had a service dedicated to assisting immigrants. On its face, that may not sound like much, but when you put it into context with the other side of that, it's incredibly likely that a lot of these immigrants that they were helping were dragged in the human trafficking side as well. Think about it. People entering a foreign country, possibly alone and desperate, most likely not able to keep in touch with family back home, and it's likely that no one knows where they're going to end up. I just kind of sat there and thought about it for a few moments, and it really got to me. I thought that someone from another country that may be looking to get away from an oppressive government or away from something like the cartel could end up finding this way out. I could imagine they would do so much to scrape together the money just to pay these people that say they would help them, and then they'd end up being trafficked and sold as an escort. I know this isn't your normal story, and I apologize if it's a bit strange in context, but it's something I found on the dark web that actually scared me, and while it was really only an implication and not confirmed, it's one of those things, when you know how these illegal networks work, it becomes clear what's happening. This story takes place when I was in college a couple of years ago. I was away from home for most of the year on campus and didn't have much going on in my social life. I didn't really socialize. And I wasn't doing much in the ways of partying or hanging out with anyone else. Throughout most of my college life, I only had one real friend, Charles. Charles was a techie. He was all about the newest trends and technology, and he was always willing to discuss the newest topic if he had an interest. Since I only had Charles, and I couldn't see my family or friends at home, I would sometimes get to a point where I was really lonely and feeling like there was no one around to talk to. Yes, cell phones are a thing, and were, and I could have just called my family at that time, but honestly, there's something about seeing the face of those you love that makes it more personal. It makes it feel more connected. Maybe it's just me, but I sometimes feel like I need to see someone's face to know they're really there. Anyways, there was one day where I mentioned this to my dad, and I was feeling a bit down about having not seen them for a couple months. And he decided to take it upon himself to send me a fancy webcam so that we could start doing video chatting. I was honestly ecstatic at the idea and I actually joked about how that was something I should have thought about. He ended up going to a tech store and buying this really nice full HD Logitech webcam. I had no idea how much he ended up spending on it but it was a really good quality camera. As soon as I got it, I set it up and got it all running, then got on a video call with my mom and dad. I was legitimately excited to have it, 
and I really felt like this was going to be the solution to my socialization issues for sure. For a month or two, everything went pretty normal with it, and the camera itself, or at least how it worked, isn't the focus of the story. The camera itself was a really good piece of hardware. The image was crystal clear, and it was really easy to use. Unfortunately, it being a good piece of technology meant that Charles liked it as well. Long story short was that Charles was waiting to start a YouTube channel where he went down internet rabbit holes and solved those weird mysteries on the web. Think people like Frederick Kunson or Nightmind and such but decided to do those 4chan mysteries. Basically, he just asked me if he could use my computer to record himself for his videos and in return, he would be my on-call tech support. Hadn't really care about the tech support. And while it was a little weird to have him in my dorm room, I didn't mind it. For the most part, he would text me when he wanted to record. And I would go for a walk, go get food, or work on homework in the commons area of the university. The deal went for a couple weeks, two or three at most. And he recorded five or six times during this time frame. I watched his first few videos, and they were actually pretty decent. Good, interesting information that was presented in a clean way. He had one on some missing girl that some 4chans were talking about that was pretty well done. Then, he had one that explained parts of the dark slash deep web. I found it a bit strange, when he didn't even bother to ask to use my computer that week. But, I also thought that maybe he was busy with classwork. Then... When the next Monday rolled around and he didn't have class and he didn't call me, I messaged him and asked him what was up. He told me that he just wasn't feeling up to doing anything on his channel. I again thought that was odd, but didn't really push it. Just kind of told him that whenever he was wanting to do more work, to let me know. What got strange for me was that after this, he seemed to not want to talk to me anymore. Then... There was something that happened that legitimately scared the hell out of me. There was one night that I was having a lot of trouble sleeping. I was feeling incredibly restless. I was pretty much just lying there and staring at the wall. Then I rolled over and looked at my computer. At first, I didn't notice anything other than a dark screen and the window behind the monitor. Then, after a couple of seconds of just staring, something about the scene was bothering me. Then it clicked. My screen was off, sure, but I had left the tower on. This is something I do every once in a while, but then my eyes moved over and noticed that the red light on the webcam was blinking. The light only blinks when the camera is in use, and I hadn't used the camera at all that day. I sat up and started to shift out of my bed. Then I noticed the light on the camera shut off. My groggy brain struggled with this situation but I decided to get up and just unplug the camera, then try to sleep, which didn't quite work. Things got even worse the next day, when I needed to get on my computer to do some classwork. It was early in the afternoon, when I was back in my dorm, and I turned it on to do a report, when I noticed there was a document on my desktop. Read me, please. I hesitantly clicked on it and read what it said. Hello, Michael. Please don't unplug the webcam tonight. I like watching while you sleep. I'm not doing anything bad with the footage, I promise. It was literally two sentences and it made me want to puke as I read it. I immediately disconnected my computer from the internet and called Charles, demanding he come over and help me figure out what the hell is going on with this. He was hesitant at first. He told me he was busy with something else, but I told him that my computer had been compromised and I needed help immediately. When I said that, he changed his tune. When he got to my room, I found out why he changed his tune. He explained that he was doing research for his dark web video. He had to go onto the dark web. He said that while he was doing so, he came across a few sites that were sketchy, but he tried to avoid anything that was too questionable. This is until he came across a website that required you to accept a prompt to access. He said that it looked reasonable. It just said that you accept their terms and whatnot. But when he clicked it, the computer locked up and it looked like someone else had connected to my computer. Apparently, 
He watched as someone else got into my system and basically did whatever they wanted, and he didn't tell me. He said that he was pretty sure they had disconnected and that they hadn't done anything to the computer because part of the agreement page said that they wouldn't use my info for malicious purposes. He said this as if he hadn't told me that this person was remotely accessing my computer to watch me sleep, as if hackers on the dark web have a code of conduct. I may have gone off on him, telling him that it was the dumbest thing he could have done, and that he needed to fix the problem right then and there. I told him he needed to get all of my files off the system, and then wipe it, or else I would make his life hell. A threat that I have literally no idea how I would have followed through on. Thankfully, Charles was a bit timid, and he agreed to help me. Obviously, this was a few years ago, and I'm no longer on that campus, and I'm pretty sure that guy never got onto my system again after that. Despite this, I have literally never slept with my computer in the same room since, and I've always made sure to turn off my computer when I'm done using it every night. I have a fairly short story about a personal experience that I had on the dark web, and honestly, it's actually more so a weird story than it is creepy. There's absolutely a creep aspect to it, no doubt about that. But for the most part, it was pretty much just one of those things that you look at, get a bit curious about, then move on with your life from there. That's what I did anyways. So, obviously, I'm a deep web user. I like to hit up a bunch of random pages that exist out there. Some are pretty tame. Some of them probably could coexist alongside pages like Facebook and Reddit. But I also like to spend some of my time on sites that a lot of people would consider to be detestable or some other adjective like that. No, I don't really spend time on illegal or gross or any content like that, but I like what I like. And really, it's just a few pages that may be morally in a gray area. No, I'm not going to name the pages. I'm just going to say that I'm an adult and I can do what I want. I'm trying to over justify this and I shouldn't. One of the pages I like to go on is a bit of a marketplace where you can buy odds and ends, and the occasional oddity. There have been a lot of things that I wanted to spend money on, but then couldn't justify. Things like vials of blood from certain celebrities that are into Scientology, various bootleg DVDs of early cuts of movies. There was even a book one time that was supposedly signed by Charles Manson, but it was a certain book that I wouldn't be caught dead owning. So, as cool as having Manson's signature would be to me, I just kind of moved on and accepted that it was something I'd never own. Now, as most of you know, there's a certain niche on the dark web for illegal items. Things like the aforementioned bootleg DVDs, stolen movie scripts, drugs, of course. There's a lot that you can buy on the dark web that you really shouldn't. One thing you don't usually expect to find, accessories like personal accessories. There is one page on the market that I found that sold things like wallets, shoes, and watches, and they had what they stated to be exotic leathers available. My curiosity definitely got its grips on my mind and I started looking through the wares, and I was shocked at what they claimed to have. The first thing that I saw was a ton of leathers made of alligator skins, not terribly crazy, there's certainly a market that exists on the surface for it. Then, I clicked through, and they claimed to have a camel leather shoe available, which I thought was cool, but again, not terribly weird if you live in places where camels are common. Then I saw weird stuff, cat leather watches, dog leather wallets. It actually started to make me feel a bit blah, thinking of someone's pet being turned into an accessory. Then I saw dolphin leather, and that, I'm pretty sure, is illegal to use. And then, finally, there was a small section of the store dedicated to human leather. You heard that right. Leather made of human skin. They promised it was durable, and that it was well worth the extra money it cost to source it. There was even a customization section 
where you could choose the ethnicity of the product if you wanted to change it up. Again, my imagination kind of took over and I started thinking about who the hell was buying this stuff. But with the process they were going through, with the amount of money they were charging, there had to be a market, right? Anyways, like I said, that was my story. And I know it was weirder than creepy. It's pretty sickening that it exists. And honestly, I think I'll stick with my crappy pleather and Velcro wallet. Tonight's stories were four true dark web stories submitted by Anonymous. If you enjoyed these stories and want more like them, please let me know in the comment section. Hey, did you have merch? Yeah, it's crazy, right? But I do. And if you'd like to walk around representing my realm and gaining new travelers, the links to my merch store, as well as all my other social medias, will be in the description below. As always, I'd like to say a special thank you to all my lovely Patreons. 242 Reads. Rando Calrissian. Pam. Seraphine, the Midnight Bard. Creepy Clown Girl. Mia Mina. Philia Noctis. Hair Raising Narratives. Spooky Boo Scary Story Time. Lichen Trucker and Nathaniel Nelson. If you'd like to join these lovely travelers by letting my fire, you can do so by becoming a Patreon as well. The support is always appreciated but never expected. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and ding that bell if you're new for all future content, as it'll really help the channel grow and push this video out into the algorithm. But as always, travelers, once you step into my realm, there's no stepping out.